Hello there, glorious ones, coming to you from the back deck of our Revolution Movement compound that doubles as a dwelling place for Donna and Kevin. And it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon, partly cloudy. Kevin spent about four and a half hours on the beach today, so I got a little bit of a red tint, reddish brown tint. Uh, Donna took the opportunity to just rest because we walked two hours on Jekyll Island yesterday. But anyway, uh, this is uh, Food for Thought video uh, lesson number two, uh, and it is a follow-up to the original one that had to do with um, teaching on how to speak with authority. So we've had a follow-up question, which is very, very exciting. I'm so glad that uh, you are, uh, are processing uh, these videos and asking more questions. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, one thing I appreciate it uh, is because it helps to keep me sharp. Um, you know, so I want to encourage you, ask questions. Think about what is being communicated and then think of questions. Again, you know, people don't want to ask questions because they think either the question is dumb or they think everybody probably already knows the answer to their question, so they think they're dumb. That's dumb. Don't do that. Ask questions, okay? So <clears throat> a follow-up question uh, has come forth, and it is this. How do you teach kids to only do what uh, they see the father doing or only say what they hear the Father saying. In other words, Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. I only say what I hear my Father saying. Now, that's really a paraphrase. I don't think it's an exact quote. But in essence, that's what he was communicating, So, which is a great question. How, how do we teach anybody, but especially children, how do we teach people, and especially children, to learn how to and to become comfortable and confident in seeing what the Father is doing and doing that and hearing what the Father is saying and saying that. So I'm not going to answer the question in this video. Instead, I'm going to ask a question. See, Jesus, uh, and I can answer the question and I may. I may end up answering it um, the way I would answer it, but I'm really interested to know how you would answer that yourself. How would, how would you teach children, or how would you teach anybody, but especially children, to see what the Father's doing and do that, hear what the Father's saying, and say that, as long as the Father wants us to say what He's saying, right? Jesus didn't say everything He heard the Father saying, but He only said what He heard the Father saying. So I want to ask y'all a question. I want you to think about it, and I want you to reply back by email to me so that I can see how you processed uh, this question, okay? How did Jesus learn to see what the Father was doing and hear what the Father was saying? How did Jesus learn that? All right, so there's some core values, there's some principles, there's some anchor points that I use uh, to help me study and learn, process, ponder, and conclude what uh, the Bible is saying, the truth, the revelation. Now, there are more than these, but I want to mention three to help you, help you in this video to answer the question. How did Jesus learn to do that? Uh, so one, Jesus is perfect theology. You've heard me say this, I'm sure, at least once, probably a bunch of times. Jesus is perfect theology. Two, Jesus is our role model for all life and ministry. He is perfect theology, and he is our role role model for all life in ministry. And three, first the natural, then the spiritual. Okay, so <clears throat> Hebrews 1 tells us that 
God had spoken many times and in many different ways to the fathers through the prophets. But in these last days, he is speaking uh, through his son, who he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory in the exact representation of God's nature. And he upholds all things by the word of his power. <clears throat> so Jesus is perfect theology. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. In fact, he said to Philip, how can you say, show us the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay, so Jesus is perfect theology. Anything we want or need to know about God the Father, we find in the life and ministry of Jesus. And if there's any conflict between those two things, we've got to change what we believe because Jesus fully, completely, and perfectly revealed the Father to the world. And then Jesus is our role model for all life and ministry. Jesus said this in John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Now, I'm not going to exegete <clears throat> that verse, but I take that to mean that Jesus is my role model for all life and ministry. He wants me to do what he did, but he wants me to do more than what he did. So he set the pattern or he set the example. All right. So as we mentioned before, he's the standard. He's the standard for everything that pertains to life in ministry. In fact, the Bible says that everything that pertains to life and godliness we find in Christ Jesus. Okay. And then third, first the natural, then the spiritual. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15, 46. The spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. See, Paul was not saying the natural world preceded the spiritual world. That would be impossible because God is spirit and he spoke the material world into existence. We know that from Hebrews, right? We know that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So God spoke things into existence. So he, Paul is not saying the natural world came before the spiritual world. I believe what he's saying is we can learn spiritual truths from natural things. And that's why Jesus spent so much time teaching spiritual truths using natural things. Farming, you know, fig trees, uh, the birds of the air, seed that is sown, wind representing the Holy Spirit, all these kinds of things and much, much more Jesus used to reveal spiritual realities using natural things that could be observed and learned through observation. So again, the question posed to me, for me to answer is, how do you teach kids to only do what the Father's doing and to only say what the Father's saying. I could answer that. But my answer is this. If you go back and watch the first video lesson, you'll find a clue. Now that was the Holy Spirit because I had no way of knowing this follow-up question was going to be asked. But I believe in my heart of hearts that the Holy Spirit knew and so what I shared in the first video should give you some direction it's a clue to help you come to the right conclusion not just any conclusion but the right conclusion of the question I'm asking you how did Jesus learn to do that so again I would love to hear from you please uh, respond reply back to this email that I'm going to be sending this uh, video link to YouTube and I'm going to link it up to YouTube upload it and give you that link so you can watch it and I want you to think about it process it pray into it get your Bible out do your own study 
You know, you actually learn more when you study than when you just take in what somebody else tells you uh, that they got from their own study. You'll learn way more if you'll do your own study, your own research. Okay, so again, keep in mind what I shared last time because I believe there is at least one clue, maybe more clues. So God bless. Thank you again for encouraging me encouraging me in in this new format this new strategy to uh, communicate with you i really do appreciate it god bless peace in